What is up guys, in this video we're going to be discussing support vector machines which are another type of classification algorithm that you can use in machine learning. As you can see right here we have a line that does its best to split the green dots from the red dots and it's going to have a parameter that we can provide which is essentially how much bias or how many errors we can allow this program to have and this will help us with giving a more accurate line. As you can see right now, we have a red dot on this side of the line and a few green dots on this side of the line. The bias pretty much tells us that this is okay and that will just be taken into account when making the line. Otherwise, you might end up with a line that's completely straight or in another sense, which will lead you to have either data that is underfitting or overfitting. So we will discuss later how to use the bias, but the basic concept is that this is used for splitting data into several groups with a line or a curve, it just splits data into groups as opposed to deciding which dot each one of these plots is closer to. So we're going to be making something similar to this one over here. As you can see, we have an X that is on two overlapping plots. And if we use the support vector machine algorithm, this one is going to be considered a red dot because it is on the red side of the imaginary line that goes through these two squares. Otherwise, if we use KNN, you're going to notice that there are more green dots next to this X, so it's going to consider it a green dot. And the outcomes might be very similar, but you definitely need to make your own call whether to use the KNN or the support vector machine when making these classifications. But let's get started immediately by creating our little program. And the first thing we have to do is go ahead and import NumPy as np. Then we're going to go ahead and import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, just as always. Then from sklearn.neighbors, we will import the kneighbors classifier because we are going to be using both the support vector machine and the kneighbor classifier so we can see and compare them actively. Then from sklearn svm, we will import svc. Then we should also go ahead and import the train test split. So sklearn model selection, and we will import train test split. Now, the first thing we're gonna do in this sample project is create some fake samples. So we're gonna go ahead and type in create samples, and this is going to take a sample size. Now, our project is just going to be able to classify whether people are green or people are red. And it's a very simple classification program. You can definitely change this with something else that you want to classify. So first we need to create some samples of green people and this is going to equal a numpy random rand int and it's going to be between the number of 0 and 100. Then we need to provide a size and this is going to be a two dimensional array. So the sample size is just going to be whatever we insert up here in the function and it's going to be of two elements each. So I'll just add the two here and we can go ahead and actually print this so you can understand a bit better what we just created. So create samples, let's say, let's create 200 and then let's right click and run this project. So what you will notice is we have 100 samples with two elements each in each one of these lists. So as you can see by these two brackets, it is a two dimensional array. And if you have any other confusions, just remember to print out whatever we're making and it should make everything fairly obvious. But let's go ahead and remove these two statements. And we need to also convert this to a list. Then we're going to duplicate this and we're gonna define the second group to be red people. This time it's gonna be a random number between 50 and 150 and the rest can remain the same. The next thing we have to do is for each green person, we need to provide a output which will tell the program that it is in fact a green person. And to do this, we're just going to combine the value of zero with each green person and the value of one for each red person. So later when we get an output of zero, that will mean it is a green person and when we get an output of one that will define it as a red person. So let's go ahead and create this variable which is np concatenate because we need to create a large list and the first thing inside here we're going to create is a list of zeros. So np zeros and that's going to be large as our sample size. So this will just fill up one list filled with zeros, which will take care of the amount of green people. Then we should fill up a second list, which is going to be filled with ones. And that's also going to be the sample size. Then we need to flatten this 
and convert it to a list. Next, we need to go ahead and create a map and we are going to return the green people as green people, the red people as red people, and finally, the caller as the caller. Now let's just make sure this actually works and let's print this function. So print create samples with let's say 10 samples and click on run. So what you should notice is we will have 10 different samples for green people, 10 different samples for red people, and then we should have 20 numbers in total. These 10 belong to the green people and these 10 belong to the red people. So, so far so good. We created some samples that tell us that these are the people and these ones are red and these ones are green. The next thing we have to do in this program is create a function that determines the color of the person. And this is essentially the entire prediction. So def determine color. And we're going to put two random input variables, which are going to be A and B. And this is just for the purpose of the video. In the previous video, I provided the height and the weight. But of course, I don't really know what factors to provide to define someone as red or green. So I just decided to insert the values of A and B. And you'll see how we can use that as soon as we finish the program. But the first thing we want to do is prepare the data we just created. So data is going to equal create samples and we will create 100 samples. And I also forgot to mention that the number of samples that we create will be multiplied by two because of course this is 100 samples and this is 100 samples. So we'll end up with a total of 200 samples. But right below that, we're gonna create our green people again, our red people, and that's going to equal the data at the index of green people. And the same thing for the red people. And then we're going to create a list of people which are green people plus red people. Next, we need to extract the color data. So we're just gonna type in color and the data at the color. Next, we're going to go ahead and create our X variable, which is going to be NP array of the people. And the output is going to be the Y, which is the NP array of the caller. Then we have to split the data into testing and training data. So train underscore X, test underscore X, train underscore Y, test underscore Y. And that's going to equal train test splits with X and Y inside with a sample size of 0.2 or 20%. Next, we're going to create our classifier for the support vector machine and for the K neighbors classifier. So we're gonna start off with CLF for classifier and that's going to equal SVC and we are going to use a kernel and we're just going to be covering the most basic one, which is the linear one. And this just provides us a way of splitting the data into two or three parts with a line. So we're just going to add the kernel of linear and then we can go ahead and provide a bias. So I'm going to add five and we're going to go back to the image so I can explain it once again. As you can see, sometimes we will have dots that go over the line to the wrong side, but the program will not keep that into account. So it will do its best to try to get all of these dots onto one side. And sometimes when it does that, the line will be biased and it won't really give you proper results. So what happens when we add the number of five to C, for example, it tells us that we don't have to worry about this red dot being here, this red dot being here, this green dot being here, this green dot being here. It will ignore those or keep or take them into account and it will adjust the line to a better split. So that is the basic concept of this C bias over here. Then we're going to go ahead and create our KNN classifier which is going to be the K neighbors classifier. And as in the last video, that just takes a number of neighbors that we wanted to refer to. And in this one, I'm going to add 15. And this kind of functions the same way. If you have too many neighbors, it's going to be biased. If you have too few, it's not going to really pick the right option. So there's a lot to keep into account with underfitting and overfitting the data. Next, we want to go ahead and train the data. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and refer to our models and call dot fit. And inside here, we need to provide train X and train Y. Then we can duplicate this and change this to KNN. Then we want to go ahead and print the score of each of the models so we can understand how good each one of them is doing comparatively. So we're just going to first print the score of the support vector machine. So score, and we're going to add some parentheses, SVC, and that's going to be the CLF.score with the test X and the test Y. Then we can duplicate this and change this to KNN 
and just insert KNN here. Next, we should go ahead and predict our input values. So we will start with the CLF input and that's going to equal CLF.predict. And we need to insert a two dimensional array with A and B inside. We will just duplicate that, change the second one to KNN and again, just type in KNN.predict. Next, we will go ahead and convert this to an int, each one of these two predictions, because right now it will return to us a NumPy array, which is really hard to use. So convert to int. And to do that, all we have to do is type in CLF value and KNN value. And that will equal the int of the prediction of CLF at the index of zero and the int of the prediction of KNN at zero. Then we can finally print our results and the predictions that our program has made. So let's go ahead and type in print, create a formatted string. And the first one is going to be the support vector machine. So we will just type in SVC. And inside here, we will insert and inside here, we will just insert the CLF value. And then inside here, we will insert a very simple if statement. So we will say that it is red if the CLF value is equal to one, else it will be green. And we shall do the same exact thing for the KNN value. So KNN, change this to KNN, and we change this value to KNN value as well. Now we can go ahead and actually test the program. So let's go ahead and determine the color. And let's say that we want to determine the color of something that is 100 and 100. And you might be wondering, where did I get these values from? But if you remember earlier, we created some random samples. So most of the numbers you insert between zero and 100 should be classified as a green person. And any values between 50 and 150 should more or less be classified as a red person. So chances are this is going to be a red person when we run the program. And as you can see, KNN here gave us an accuracy rating of 77, while the SVC gave us an accuracy reading of 80%. But they both gave us an output of red and red. So they were both able to classify the person as a red person. So, so far our machine is working perfectly, but now let's go ahead and plot these dots so you can understand actually what's going on. Nice zoom in effect. So what we have to do now is create two different plots. One is going to be the red scatter plot and one's going to be the green scatter plot. So the red scatter is going to equal a list of a NumPy array with red people inside. And this is going to be all the values at the index of zero. Then we can just duplicate this because we will use the exact same thing and we will change this to one. So this will get all of the X and Y values for the red people. Then we should do the same thing for the green scatter. So green people and just replace what's inside with green people. And then we need to scatter these. So PLT scatter, and that's going to equal the red scatter at the index of zero and the red scatter at the index of one. And we want the red scatter to have the color of red. Then we will do the same thing for the green scatter. And also as an addition, I want to show you exactly how we can get the support vectors. And essentially this is going to show us where the line has been drawn. So we're just gonna type in support vectors and that's going to equal CLF dot support vectors. Then we will type PLT dot scatter and we want to scatter our support vectors starting with everything from the index of zero and we will do the same thing for the index of one. So just go ahead and duplicate this and insert a one here. Then we are going to change the color to blue and we will just make the marker a circle. And the final thing to do now is to plot our own dot, the one we decide to insert so we can understand where we put it. And to do that, we will just type in PLT scatter A, B. We will change the color to black. We will increase the size to 200 and we will turn the marker into an X. And don't forget to call plt.show. Now the final thing to do is to go ahead and insert some values to actually determine the color. So we'll go ahead and type in determine color and we'll type in 100 and 100 again. So let's go ahead and save so we can run the program. So right now, as you can see, we end up with a plot that has a lot of green dots and a lot of red dots. And the blue is essentially where the program tries to understand where it can draw the line. So right now it has an imaginary line around here. 
and since the X is found on the other side, it is classified as a red. But now let's go ahead and insert the value of 80 and 80. This should give us a different output, which I find quite interesting. So let's go ahead and run the program now. So now, as you can see, there are a lot of green dots around the X, which means KNN is going to recognize this as a green dot. But the support vector machine created a line that has this X on the red side. So that one is going to recognize it as a red dot. So now if we go back to our console, you'll notice that we will have different outputs for each of these algorithms. So this is actually where it is up to you how you want to classify it. If you believe that it is more accurate that the model classifies it in a line system, then go for that. If you believe KNN is the better way to do it, then pick KNN. It will pick the closest neighbors. But our program with the support vector machine is finished. And now you can actively classify two different things or three different things. That's up to you. It has made this invisible line, as you can see between all of these blue dots. And since this was found on the red side of the blue line, it was classified as red. If we go ahead and change this to 40 and 40, it's going to be classified as a green dot because it's on the green side of this imaginary line. And the closest neighbors are also green, so it will also be classified as green according to the nearest neighbors algorithm. And sometimes the SVC is more accurate and sometimes the KNN is more accurate, but this is more up to you which one you decide to choose. Also, as always, you can find this project in my GitHub repository and there is a link in the description down below in case you are interested. But as always, guys, with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.